Well, we've got the last math counts mini of the year. And when I saw this hexagonal bipyramid thing, you know what I thought. I thought, I need my man Harvey. Hey, how's it going, Harvey? Now, if you've seen my math counts minis before, you've seen Harvey, you've seen what he can do, even if you can't quite see what he sees. Hey, Harvey, you going to nationals this year? You going to nationals? Yeah, I'm going too. Now, if you're going to nationals, you got to watch out for him when you're taking pictures, all right? Because my man is a gifted photo bomber. I mean, check it out on the Math Counts website. Look at the pictures from last year's nationals, and you're like, half of them. He's sitting there giving someone the rabbit ears. You know, watch out for this dude. All right, so you're going to help us out with this 3D problem, right? No, it's a 3D problem. Hexagonal bipyramid. It's not 2D. Oh, come on. Harvey, hexagonal bipyramid. You know, hexagonal, hexagon means that's the base. The base is a hexagon. You start with a hexagon. And pyramid, that means you take triangles, and you go up from, you know, each, each side of the hexagon is a base of a triangle, and it goes up to a point up top. And the bipyramid part, bipyramid, that means two bi. You got that, Harv? Bipyramid means there's another pyramid going down. Boom, down to the bottom, all right? So we got a hexagon base, triangles going up to the top, triangles going down to a bottom point. You got that? You got that? Doesn't look like that. What? Oh, of course it's not going to stand on the point, right? It's a, it's a game die. You roll it, it's not going to stand on the point. That's obvious, Harv. It's going to fall over, right? It's going to fall over, boom. It's going to fall over, and it's going to land. It's going to land on one of these triangular faces. So it's not going to stand up like this on the point. It's going to fall over, and you're going to have this triangular face on the ground. You know, the hexagon is going to be kind of like this, and it's going to come, come to a point up here, come to a point down there. Got it? Got it? Yeah. I don't see it either. I'm going to try to sketch it here. I'm going to go ahead and try to sketch this 3D figure. It's a 3D problem, Harv, not 2D. Stay with me. All right, here we go. I'm going to try to sketch. I'm going to sketch the hexagon. It's a 3D. We're going to do this. All right, here we go. I'm going to sketch the hexagon first, and the hexagon is going to be kind of slightly, you know, kind of slanted a bit. This is, this is not easy. You should try this at home, but it's still not easy. So I'm going to draw my hexagon. There's my hexagon. And I got a, I got a triangular face on the bottom. This is the one that's sitting on the table. All right, it goes out to this point out here. And there's a you know, triangular face that's kind of sitting a little bit angled down. There's one a little bit angled a little up. There's one that's pointing up. There are a couple faces in the back here that you wouldn't be able to see if you were looking at it from the side. One pointing a little up, one pointing a little down. Then we got all the ones coming out to this point up at the top up here. So there's this point up here somewhere. There's a triangular face up here on the top. Triangular face up here pointing up. There's one pointing kind of upward this way, one you know, slightly down. And there's one pointing, you know, face facing down this way. And then there are a couple in the back back there. All right, so there's my hexagonal bipyramid right there. Boom, it's beautiful. Yeah, I'm still kind of, I'm stuck. You know, it's a 3D problem. I'm, I'm having trouble seeing 2D problem. I keep saying 2D. You keep saying, it says 3D. It's a 3D, 3D problem, 3D figure. Make it a 2D problem. Oh, that's right. 3D problems. Uh, that's right, Harvey. They're usually 2D problems in disguise. So we're going to turn this 3D problem into a 2D problem. And I want to do it in a way that I can use some of this stuff that's in the problem. I know this, this thing, this height one centimeter. I know that the height, the distance from this center up to a point, distance from here down to that point, is one. So I, want to, I think I want, to, I want to cut this thing. Boom, cut it right in half. I'm going to cut it in half along a line that's going to help me out. I need to cut it in a way. I'm going to keep this one centimeter. So I'm going to come right along this. I need to keep an eye on what I'm looking for. I'm looking for this how high off the ground. I want this height thing, right? I want the height. I want the height. So I need to cut it in a way that I'm going to get that height into my cut. So I'm going to cut it through right along the, the altitude of this top triangle, the altitude of this bottom triangle, go through the midpoints of these opposite sides, right? And these will give me altitudes along these triangles because these triangles are all isosceles. They're all the same. So when I cut right through here, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a quadrilateral. I'm gonna cut along the altitude of this triangle, altitude of this triangle, altitude of this triangle, altitude of this one in the back. Cut right through those four altitudes. They're all the same. I'm making a rhombus. I know all about rhombuses, right? So when I cut this, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a rhombus. I'm gonna make a rhombus here, and each of these side lengths. It's going to be an altitude of one of these triangles. So they're all the same. It's a nice, pretty rhombus. And well, one thing I like about rhombus is, well, their diagonals are perpendicular. So I'm going to go ahead and draw those diagonals. Diagonals are perpendicular. 
and they even know something about one of these diagonals right away. This diagonal right here, the one that's going from here to here, that's the thing going from here to here. Well, here to here is one, there to there is one, because they tell us that in the problem. This is one, this is one. And again, I'm looking for the height here, and I see height, and I'm, I don't see what to do. What's that? Do the obvious thing when you see height. I lost height. <laughs> we'll come back to that. Um, uh, what else can I figure out here? Well, I know these are the altitudes. This is point to point. What is this? This is connecting the opposite midpoints of this regular hexagon. Regular hexagons are really nice. Regular hexagons, we can work with regular hexagons by drawing in the diagonals and just splitting the regular hexagon into six equilateral triangles. And we know that the side length is one on each of these triangles because the side length is one on the hexagon. And when I'm drawing this thing, this thing that's going across here, going across here, and connecting opposite midpoints of the hexagon, well, this is just an altitude of one of these little equilateral triangles. That's side length one, this is side length one half, and this is a little 30, 60, 90 triangle. So this little piece in here, this piece over here, each of these, these are these two pieces here, is root 3 over 2. These are 30, 60, 90 triangles because these are equilateral. So this is root 3 over 2. This is root 3 over 2, and I still don't know what h is. Obvious thing when I see heights. What? Oh, when I see height, I think area. Well, I can find the area of this rhombus, right? I got a rhombus. I can find the area of these two triangles, add them up, or I can just say, oh, it's a rhombus. I multiply the diagonals, take half, and I get the area. This diagonal is root 3, this one's 2, multiply those, I get 2 root 3, divide by 2, I get the square root of 3. So the area of this rhombus is the square root of 3, but it's also the height times the side length. That's really convenient because, of course, a rhombus is a parallelogram. So if I can find the side length, I can write an equation to get the height. And I can find the side length because i got to write triangles. We're going to break out some Pythagorean theorems. So you've got x squared. I square this, I get 3 quarters. Square 1, I get 1. I add those two together, I get 7 quarters. So I take that, take the square root of that, and x is the square root of 7 over 2. So now the x times h equals the area of the rhombus, which we just saw is the square root of 3. So we said that h times x, which is the square root of 7 over 2, has to equal the square root of 3. So now I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 over the square root of 7. So this is going to tell me that h is 2 times the square root of 3 over the square root of 7. Multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 7. And then I get 2 times the square root of 21 all over 7. There's my height. And nice work, Harv. Thanks. All right, maybe, maybe I'll be able to handle the second one without you. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I know it's unlikely. Here we go. Quadrilateral A, P, B, Q. We got two vertices, and these two vertices here, P and Q, are on this line given by this equation up here. P, Q is 3, and we want to find the area of the quadrilateral. Well, this is pretty straightforward. I mean, they gave us this length right here, right? So I can just find the areas of these two triangles. Find the areas of these two triangles. I've got a base. Just draw in the altitudes, right? Just draw in the altitudes. And let's see, I'm drawing an altitude there. And I have to continue this out here. Draw in an altitude here. What? I'm doing this the long way. Whatever, Harv. I got this, man. I got this. Yeah, you're just jealous because I got to that right away. Draw in the altitudes. We'll find, and then, you know, I see the altitudes. I know where we're going here. I see a Right angle there, I'm thinking, I'm thinking already, I think a little Pythagorean theorem, don't see side lengths yet, but I'm also thinking similar triangles, because there are right angles all over the place. These two triangles, this triangle is similar to that triangle, we see that right away, because these two angles are equal, these two angles are equal. This little triangle is similar to this big right triangle, because they share that angle, and they both have right angles. So I can get at this little triangle using some similar triangles. Now all I have to do is find some sides over here. That's easy, because they gave me this equation, really nice of them. 
So if y is 0, I'm going to figure out what this point out here is. If y is 0, then x is 19 quarters. So this side length right there is 19 quarters. All right, and if x is 0, so figure out where we are on the y-axis here. If x is 0, that's 19 thirds. What? Yeah, hey, yeah, you already told me I'm doing it the long way, but eh, stay with me here. 19 thirds, 19 quarters. I see that 3 and a 4. And I'm thinking 3, 4, 5 triangle, and I realize, hey, wait a second. This side is 3 quarters the length of that side. One leg is 3 quarters the length of the other. I do have a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Yes, I know you knew that right away. How did you know that right away? Slope of the line. Yeah, you would. I slope here, if I solve for y there, I get a slope is negative 4 thirds of 4 over 3. That's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. All right, Harvey, I'll give you that one. Okay, so you know it was a 3, 4, but I still needed this length, Harvey. I needed this right here. This is my hypotenuse. This is the long leg of this triangle, right? right? So I can find the height here. The height here is going to be, let's see, 4 fifths, 4 fifths of the hypotenuse. The long leg is 4 fifths of the hypotenuse. So this one right here is 19 fifths. And then we're going to do the same thing over here. Right? Because this triangle is similar to that triangle. So I can find the length of this. I can find the length of this because this whole thing is 8. So that's 32 quarters. Subtract the 19 quarters and I've got 13 quarters over here. And then this height here is going to be 4 fifths the hypotenuse. The long leg is 4 fifths the hypotenuse in a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So this is 13 fifths. And now I can solve the problem. I'm going to take the area of this triangle, which is... 1 half times PQ, this little, this triangle over here, times 13 fifths. And I need to add the area of this triangle. Let's see, we got 1 half times PQ times 19 fifths. And I can just factor out that PQ and it's, well, the PQ is 3. We're told that right there. And so I factor that out and I get 3 halves times, let's see, 13 fifths and 19 fifths gives me 32 fifths. Wait a second. 32 fifths, and this whole thing was, was 32 fourths. There is a faster way to do this. Yeah, use the big triangle. Check this out. You're going to like this. My man, he's, he sees all sorts of things. All right. Look what happens when I just keep continuing this. And I go like this. All right, I'm going to, yeah, that's not a very good one. That's a better line. All right, I go like this. I'm going to continue this. I'm going to make a right angle here. I'm going to make, I'm going to make this length right here is the same as this here. You know, this height is the same as this height. All right, so when I'm, when I'm finding the areas of these two triangles and adding them, you know, the bases are the same. Really what I'm doing is I'm adding the altitudes. But when I add these two altitudes, boom, boom, I'm getting this segment right here. Right? This, this length right here, this, this 13 fifths comes over here. Well, now I look at this triangle. When I look at this triangle, of course, you know, it shares an angle with this little triangle. So it's this right triangle is similar to this little right triangle, so it's similar to this one. It's a 3, 4, 5 triangle also. And I know that its hypotenuse is 8, 32 quarters. So its long leg is 4 fifths that hypotenuse, which is 32 fifths. So this is 32 fifths is going to be the sum of these two altitudes, this 32 fifths. So I could have jumped straight to that without ever having to worry about this 19 quarters, 19 thirds. I could have just used the line to find that it's a 3, 4, 5, this guy. So sum these, I get 32 fifths. Now I'm ready to finish the problem. 3 times 16 is 48 fifths, and that's the area of the quadrilateral. All right, awesome work, Carve. All right, getting in. This is the last, last mini of the year, so we're going we're gonna to wave goodbye. And you, you get in here. You did good on that, all right? Yeah, see you all. Hey, stop that.